scanning photos with a camera or even your phone is easier and quicker than using a flatbed scanner and the results are often higher quality. In this video, I'll go through the steps on how to make your negatives positive and easy ways to get them looking good. I'll cover black and white first and then how to deal with those trickier color negatives after. The fastest way to get a final image is to open Photoshop or Affinity Photo like I have here and press Ctrl I to invert the image. You can treat it almost like a native digital image from there. Remove saturation with a hue saturation or HSL layer, add a brightness and contrast layer and the image is on its way. But there's a problem. A roll of film has up to 36 images on it and if you're doing a few rolls at once, you'll need a faster way to batch process these files. For batch editing, I use Lightroom, though Capture One would do the job too. Here's the catch, there's no invert function in Lightroom, but there is a workaround in the curves. Curves match the input data on the x-axis and the output data on the y-axis. By default, dark in results in dark out, bright in results in bright out. So move the left hand node up so that dark in now becomes bright out. Then use the right node to make the bright in dark out. The image is inverted. Because of this inversion, your brightness, highlights, shadows, blacks and white sliders will all work in reverse. So move your brightness slider up to darken the image or down to brighten it. This gives us a base exposure for the rest of the treatments. Reduce the saturation to zero for black and white photographs. If you want to add a sepia tone, you can do that by leaving a small amount of saturation and adjusting the color temperature. I crop to leave the film borders on. Not because it looks cool, but it does look cool, but because it shows me the film type and the frame number for when I need to find that negative in the future. Because I scan the frames in the same location every time, I can select a number of images and use auto sync with the crop tool and do them all at once. Don't forget to turn sync off again afterwards. The frame of the image is an absolute black point because it's a completely unexposed part of the film. So remember, we'll have to use the white slider to make the blacks black. An alternative to get the same job done is the tone curves because you can make the adjustment with a histogram overlay for reference. Shortcut key J will make anything pure black show up as blue so you can see the adjustment in real time. If it's not enough, you can use the right hand node in the curves panel to clip the blacks further. Though this is an absolute black point, you should make these adjustments to taste and to honor the image. Same process for the white point. Just move the slider until you see red and adjust to taste. When you're happy, press J to remove the clipping colors. Zoom in to two to one and look at the grain. Grain will be more prevalent in some films like Tri-X and HP5 and smaller formats like 35mm and half frame. It can be desirable or not depending on your goals. In the details panel, you'll notice that increasing the sharpening will sharpen the grain. And if you try to mask the sharpening, you'll get a weird fuzzy edge. So go very easy on the sharpening. And you can even increase the luminance slider to smooth out the grain a little bit. The last thing to do is use the spot removal tool to remove dust and scratches from the film scan. You can also make sure that lens corrections are turned on Otherwise, you'll have the character of both your film camera and digital camera lenses in the image. It's a lot of work, but you won't have to do this much again. In the presets panel on the left, click the plus icon, click check all, then save it as something like black and white negative. Next time you want to treat a negative, you either select your preset in the library view or select your edited image and copy and paste the preset by using Control Shift C to copy. Control shift v to paste. We'll go through exactly the same process for colour images, but there's a few extra steps. Colour is a pain. Firstly, you can't treat the colours globally. You have to treat the shadows and the highlights separately. Secondly, colour film has a colour character to it. Depending on the film, some are neutral, some are vibrant, but with a scan you're imposing your own personal preference to that colour too. So you can fight the colors or flow with them. Going with the flow is easy. Here, I'm gonna fight them. Like with black and white, invert curves and set a base brightness and crop. 
Start with a basic white balance using the picker on the frame, but this won't get you all the way. You can use the temperature slider to get it closer. Remember that everything's opposite, so sliding towards blue actually adds yellow. Slide towards yellow and you cool things down. Colour negative film, even expensive varieties, have a purple cast to the shadows. You can address this in a couple of ways. We can isolate the shadows in the split toning tab. In the shadows section, choose a green because it's the opposite of purple. Increase the saturation to maximum and move the balance slider until you see it's only affecting the dark areas where you saw the colour cast. Reduce the saturation to minimum and work back up again until your purples are neutralised. Another way to do it is with the colour channels in curves. You can change the curves from affecting the entire colour range with RGB and select a specific colour to work with using the channel drop down menu. Use the greens to neutralise the purples by raising the left hand shadow node. Doesn't take much. Then you can use the blue curve if you want to add some yellows to warm the image to taste. Save all this as a preset to save time on the other photos, but you'll probably have to look at each photo individually because every film stock, every different lighting condition, every subject will affect colour in its own way. I've got more information on scanning and editing film, even developing film and darkroom printing on my blog at philnenner.com.